Welcome back and in this really brief mini project you're going to get the chance to gain some experience of working with VPC flow logs. Now to do this mini project you need to make sure that you're logged into an AWS account using an identity which has admin permissions. If you're using my courses then use the I am admin identity of the general AWS account which is the management account of the organization. If you're not using my courses it needs to be an identity with admin permissions and as as always, I recommend a dedicated training AWS account. As always, just make sure that you are using the Northern Virginia region, so US-East-1. This mini project may work in other AWS regions, but this is the one which I've tested it in. Now we're going to create two EC2 instances in order to do the activities in this mini project. In order to give those EC2 instances the permissions that they need, we need to create an instance role. So we're going to do that first. So click in the search box at the top, type I am, and then open that in a new tab. Go to that tab, then go to roles, and create a role. Now it's going to be a role for an AWS service and it's going to be for EC2. So select EC2 and then move on to the next step. We're going to be applying a managed policy to this role. So into this filter box go ahead and enter Amazon SSM Managed Instance Core and press enter. And then check this box to assign this managed policy to this role and move on to the next step. And we're going to call the role demo hyphen SSM hyphen role. So enter that into the name box, scroll down to the bottom and click create role. So creating this role is going to allow us to give our EC2 instances the permissions to interact with certain elements of Systems Manager and that's going to be crucial to allow us to complete the rest of this mini project. Now we're going to need another role so go ahead and click on create role again now attached to this lesson is a full set of text-based instructions. Now you need to go ahead and open that because that contains a policy document that you're going to need in the next step. So in this case we're going to use a custom trust policy, so select that option and then select all of the JSON that's already in this box and delete it and paste in this piece of JSON policy document which is contained within the instructions attached to this lesson. Now this is going to mean that this role can be assumed by vpc-flow-logs.amazonaws.com. So this role can be assumed by the flow log service. So scroll down to the bottom, move on to the next step and we need to give the flow log service the permissions to interact with CloudWatch logs. Now to keep this simple we're going to use a full access permissions policy. So click in this filter box, type CloudWatch logs and press enter and then just expand the policy name and look for CloudWatch logs full access. So whatever assumes this role is going to have full permissions over CloudWatch logs. Once you've done that, go ahead and move on to the next step. And for the name of this role, use demo-vpc-flow-logs. And then create that role. So just to reiterate, this role is going to be assumable by the VPC Flow Log service and it's going to allow VPC Flow Logs to interact with CloudWatch Logs and you're going to see why in a second. Next, in the search box at the top, type EC2. Wait for that to load. Right click and open that in a new tab. Now we're going to create two EC2 instances. So click on instances running. Go to launch instances. For instance name put demo. Select Amazon Linux and we're going to use Amazon Linux 2. So make sure you change this from Amazon Linux 2023 to Amazon Linux 2 AMI SSD volume type. Make sure the architecture is set to 64-bit x86. For instance type, make sure you select something that's free tier eligible. This will either be t2.micro or t3.micro. For key pair login, click in this box and select proceed without a key pair, not recommended. We're going to be logging into this instance using session manager so we won't need a key pair. Then scroll down and under network settings we're going to create a new security group but I want you to uncheck allow SSH traffic from anywhere. So uncheck that box. Now right below create security group just make a note of the name of the security group which is being created. In my case it's launch wizard 2 but just make a note of the name of the security group that you're creating. 
scroll down all the way to the bottom. Under Advanced Details, expand this. And under I Am Instance Profile, scroll down and select the demo SSM role that you created in the previous step. Now one final change, under Number of Instances, change this from 1 to 2. And click on Launch Instance. Then click on Instances and you'll need to wait until the instance state is running and two out of two status checks have passed for each instance. So go ahead and pause this video, wait for the instance state to change to running with two out of two status checks and then you're good to continue. Welcome back, now we have the two instances in a running state, both with two out of two checks passed and we're good to continue. So the next thing is I want you to connect to both of these instances. So select the top one, right click, go to connect, choose session manager and then click on connect and that will open a session manager console to that instance. Then go back, click on instances, select the other instance, in my case the bottom one, right click, go to connect, again session manager, click on connect. I'll just reorder these tabs so that it makes sense which is which. Now just make sure that the instance ID is different on each of these tabs, just to make sure that you are connected once to each of the instances. And now we're going to test the connectivity between these two instances. So what we're going to do is run an IP space A and press enter on both of these instances. So that's the first one. And then I'm going to do the same with the second one. So IP space A and press enter. Now this is going to give us the IP address of each of these instances. So this one is 172.31.90.81. And this one is 172.31.88.138. Now what we're going to do is to try to ping one instance from the other. So just pick either of these instances and use this command, and don't worry this is contained within the text based instructions which are attached to this video if you want to copy and paste, and we need to replace this placeholder. So go ahead and delete the placeholder, and then for whichever instance you're running this ping command on, go to the other instance and just copy the entire IP address. So forget the slash 20 on the end, just copy that into your clipboard, Go back to the original instance and paste that in. Now what this is going to do is run three pings from the instance you're running this on to the instance IP that you specify and it's going to wait one second for each of these pings to respond. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Now you'll see that we won't be able to ping the other instance. So that indicates a potential connectivity issue between this instance and the other instance or vice versa. Remember the traffic has to flow from this instance to the other and then back again. To make sure this isn't an AWS specific problem, what I want to do is delete this IP address and then replace it with an internet IP address. So let's try 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 and press enter. So we can see that we can ping an internet based IP, but we aren't able to ping our other EC2 instance. And we're going to use flow logs to help us diagnose why we can't ping one instance from the other. Now to do that, go back to the main AWS console, click in the search box at the top, and start typing CloudWatch, and then open a new tab to the CloudWatch console. And we need to go to CloudWatch Logs, so on the menu on the left, click on Logs to expand it if it isn't already, and click on Log Groups. Now we're going to be creating a log group, so click on Create Log Group. For the log group name, go ahead and enter vpc-flow-logs-demo, and then just click on create. Next, we need to create our flow logs. So click in the search box, type vpc, and open that in a new tab. Go to that tab, click on your vpcs. You should only have the one which is the default vpc for this region. So check the box next to that default VPC, go to the flow logs tab and click on create flow log. And this is going to create a flow log for this VPC. Under name, go ahead and enter demo hyphen flow hyphen log. For filter, leave all selected. And then for maximum aggregation interval, go ahead and change this to one minute. 
Now we want to send our flow logs to CloudWatch Logs, so make sure that option is selected, and then in Destination Log Group, go ahead and click and select the log group that you just created. It, it should be called VPC-Flow-Logs-Demo. So we need to give Flow Logs permissions to write into this log group, and we'll do that using our IAM role that we created at the start of this mini project. So click in the IAM role drop down. Scroll right down to the bottom and you're looking for demo-vpc-flow-logs. So click on that. We'll leave everything else as default. Make sure log record format is set to AWS default format. Scroll down to the bottom and create the flow log. Now once we've done that, the flow log has been created successfully. So what we need to do is to go back to the session manager tab where we were running our pings and use the up arrow to select the command where you were pinging the other EC2 instance. It should start with a 172.31 IP address and rerun that command. So that's now being recorded inside flow logs. And we need to make a note of the instance ID of where we were running the ping from. So in my case it ends 377 alpha, you need to make a note of your instance ID. Go back to instances, select that particular instance, then go on networking, and you're looking for the ENI or Elastic Network Interface ID. So scroll down, we can see here network interfaces, and then make a note of this Elastic Network Interface ID. In my case it ends 8072, but yours will be different. Then go back to CloudWatch Logs, go into the VPC Flow Logs Demo Log Group that you created moments ago. If you don't see anything in here, just keep hitting Refresh. And we're looking for the log stream which matches the interface ID that we just noted down. In my case, 8072. Now click on the log stream and you'll see lots of entries that have been recorded by Flow Logs. Now this uses a specific AWS format. We have two, which is the Flow Logs version. Then we have your AWS account ID. Then we have the Elastic Network Interface ID, and this will match a specific ENI within your VPC. Then we have a source IP address, then a destination IP address, then we have a source port number, in this case 123, a destination port number, in this case 60407, then we have the protocol, in this case 17, so 17 is UDP, 1 is ICMP, and 6 is TCP. Now I'll make sure I include a link attached to this lesson which details this format exactly. But if we go ahead and enter an IP address in this search box, so maybe 8.8.8.8, .8 now you might see that no events are found, and this is because the traffic that we generated was generated before we enabled flow logs. So let's go back to Session Manager, and then use the up arrow to scroll back through all of the available commands and make sure that you've got ping space 8.8.8.8 highlighted and then press enter. Remember that's the ping command that works successfully. So go back to CloudWatch Logs. Let's just hit refresh again and give it time to aggregate that data and deliver it into CloudWatch Logs. And if we just keep refreshing for a couple of moments, we'll see the ping that we're sending from 172.31.88.138, in my case, to 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. So this line here is the outbound flow of packets from our instance to 8.8.8.8 and we can see accept OK and then the line above it is the return flow. So the return ping from 8.8.8.8 .8 back to our EC2 instance and again a protocol value of 1 for ICMP and accept OK. So this is why our ping works from our instance through to 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Now what I want you to do now is to go to the instance that you were pinging earlier. So not the instance you were pinging from, but the instance that you were pinging. And I want you to copy down into your clipboard the IP address that you were trying to ping. So in my case this is 172.31.90.81. So I'm going to copy that into my clipboard. And then I want you to do the same with the IP address that you were trying to ping and paste that in instead of 8.8.8.8. We can see that the flow of data from the source IP address, which in my case is 172.31.88.138, so let's just confirm this is the source instance, so the instance I'm pinging from, 
We can see that the flow of data from this instance to the destination instance, so we can see that this was accepted, but there was no response packets. Now this is indicating that the packet was blocked or lost elsewhere, but this tells us that the security group on this Elastic Network interface isn't the problem because it's not blocking any data. So now what we need to do is check the Elastic Network interface of the destination instance. So let's go back to our EC2 console and select the other instance. This is the destination instance. So this ends in my case with 8 Charlie Alpha Echo. So if I go back to here, we can see that this is the destination instance. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I need to make sure I'm on the networking tab of the destination instance and I need to get the Elastic Network Interface ID. In my case, I'm going to note down this full ID and it ends 5421 Bravo. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to check the VPC flow logs for this destination interface. Remember, flow logs are per interface, so in order to see if there's anything strange going on with the destination instance, we need to check its interface. So that's what we're going to do. So go back to CloudWatch Logs, go to Log Groups, go to the VPC-flow-logs-demo log group, and then in here look for a log stream that represents the interface ID of the destination instance. And in my case this is 5421 Bravo. So I'm going to go into that log stream. Now at this point what I'm going to do is search for the IP address of the source instance. So I'm going to get the source instance IP address which in my case is 172.31.88.138. You'll need to use your source IP address. So so this is the IP address of the instance which is doing the pings. Then go back and into filter events enter that source IP address. So now we can see another one item here. We can see that the source IP address is 172.31.88.138. And let's remind ourselves this is the source IP address, so the instance that's doing the pings. But now we can see that this is rejected. Now this tells us that the ping that's from the source instance going to the destination instance, we can tell from this line that this traffic is being rejected by the destination interface. Now this tells us that it's security that's associated with the destination EC2 instance. So let's check that out by going to instances, making sure that we have the destination EC2 instance selected, going to security, and then we can see the security group that's associated with this destination instance. If we scroll down, we can see that it has no inbound rules, and it does have one outbound rule which allows all traffic to all destinations. So this security group, because it has no inbound rules, is not allowing our ping from the source instance to enter this interface, and that's what the problem is, so that's what we need to fix. So to fix that, we need to click on the security group itself, and then make sure inbound rules is selected, and then edit it the inbound rules. We're going to add a rule, we're going to change the type to all ICMP IP version 4, and then for source we're going to put anywhere IP version 4 and click on save rules. Now this now means that the security group that's associated with the network interface of the destination EC2 instance is now going to allow any IP version 4 ICMP traffic to enter that interface and it's also going to allow any traffic out. So now if we go back to our source instance and try rerunning the ping to the other EC2 instance. Now we can see that it works, and that's because we edited the security group associated with the interface of the destination instance and allowed traffic in an inbound direction. Now let's see what happens if we block ICMP at the network ACL level. To do that we're going to move back to the EC2 console, then click on Instances, select the source instance, so we need the ID of that, which in my case is 2377A, Yours will be different, so make sure you select your source instance, then go to Networking, scroll down, and then click on the subnet ID. And that will open a new tab containing the subnet that our source instance is contained in. 
select this particular subnet, go to Network ACL, scroll down, click on the Network ACL link. So remember, this is the Network ACL that's associated with the subnet that our source instance is contained within. Select this, we can see it's associated with six subnets. Yours might be different depending on what region you use. In my case, I'm using Northern Virginia, which means that we have six subnets associated with this network ACL. Click on Outbound Rules, and you should see that you've got two rules. We've got the default implicit deny at the bottom, and then we've got the explicit allow, and this allows all outbound traffic. What we're going to do is edit these outbound rules and we're going to add a rule with greater priority than that default explicit allow. So we're going to add a new rule. The rule number is going to be 1. So these are processed in order of rule number where a lower rule number is higher priority. So if we were to use a rule number of 101, it would be behind the allow all rule and so it would be ignored. We're going to use a lower rule number, which means it's going to be processed before this allow rule. So for type, we're going to change it to all ICMP IP version 4 and we're going to change the allow to deny. So this means anything that's affected by this network ACL is going to deny any ICMP IP version 4 traffic. So go ahead and click on Save Changes, and then we're going to go back to our source instance, and I want you to ping the other EC2 instance. You should notice this still works. Now the reason this still works is because both of these instances are contained within the same subnet. So because they're contained within the same subnet, this traffic doesn't cross the subnet boundary, so isn't impacted by the network ACL. However, if we try to ping 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, this time the ping doesn't work. We don't get any response. If we head back to CloudWatch Logs, Go to our log group, so VPC Flow Logs Demo. Make sure you select the log stream for the source EC2 instance. In my case, 8072. Yours will be different. And now if you enter the IP address, so 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 and press enter, we need to give this a few minutes to update with the latest ping that we've just tried. These accept lines are from our earlier attempt pinging 8.8.8.8. .8 .8. We need to give this a few moments to update. And we can now see that we've got this reject line. So because our ping traffic from our EC2 instance through to 8.8.8.8 is being blocked, we see a reject line within flow logs. Now there's no way of telling whether this reject is from a network ACL or from a security group, but it does allow us to start identifying where traffic is being impacted. So we can see in this particular case that traffic is being rejected going to a public internet address. So this has just been a brief overview of how you can configure VPC flow logs, point those flow logs at CloudWatch logs, how you can configure the appropriate security, and we've stepped through a few few diagnostic steps that you can use to identify why traffic is being impacted either via security groups or network ACLs. Now the only thing that remains at this point is to clear up our account and return it into the same state it was before this mini project. To do that go to instances, select both of these instances, go to instance state and terminate. Make sure you're only terminating instances you created for this mini project and then confirm that termination. You'll need to wait for both of these to finish terminating, that will take a few moments. Then on the menu on the left locate security groups and you'll need to delete the security group that you created as part of this mini project. In my case, it was called Launch Wizard 2. So select it, click Actions, delete security groups, confirm that deletion. Then go to the VPC console, click on your VPCs and select the default VPC and then go to Flow Logs. You should see the flow log listed that you created earlier in this mini project. Select it, go to Actions, delete flow logs and then confirm that deletion. Then go to Network ACLs. Select the Network ACL that you edited earlier. Go to Outbound Rules. Click on Edit Outbound Rules. Locate rule number one, which is the rule that you added earlier in this mini project, and click on the Remove button next to rule number one, and then click on Save Changes. Go to the CloudWatch Logs console, click on Log Groups. Locate VPC-Flow-Logs-Demo. Check the box next to it, go to Actions, 
delete log groups, click delete. Then go to the IAM console, go to roles, type demo in the filter box at the top. Select both of the roles you created earlier in this mini project, click delete, type delete and then click to confirm. And at that point you've completed all of the tasks within this mini project and returned the account back to the same state as it was before you started. So at this point that's everything that you need to do. I hope it was enjoyable and gave you some experience of working with flow logs. At this point go ahead and complete this video and I hope you'll join me soon for another exciting mini project.